ओके आई आर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी आई आर स्टैंड फॉर इंफ्रा रेड ओके दिस टॉपिक इज मेनली यूज फॉर ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड दिस टॉपिक यू कैन सी in internet and videos and youtube this topic is very broad and start uh, from graduation to phd level so we have to stick to our all a level syllabus right <clears throat> okay infrared spectroscopy is uh, used in organic chemistry to find the functional group mainly to find the functional group present in the organic compounds okay Now the question is, how do we use infrared spectroscopy to find the functional group of the compounds? So, what will be the, what is the background of this uh, phenomenon, and um, uh, how is infrared spectrum used to predict the functional group present in the molecule? Okay, so let's do uh, mm, some. explanation first thing we have to know that the bonds are not rigid every bond because every, even there is a motion in the bond also so suppose this is carbon dioxide so it stretches also and how does it stretch when we use the word stretching bond stretching it means the bond length changes bond length changes so even if there is a bond like oh so it also vibrates okay now stretching the other types also we don't have to go like symmetric or an asymmetric in symmetric means these bond together they come closer and then they go away from center of carbon uh, simultaneously that's called symmetric and if the two bonds of carbon dioxide like they come close and go away from each other at different time so that will be called asymmetric stretching but that's not in the syllabus thus you have to know the bonds have vibration the bonds have vibration they stretch like the like we stretch our arms okay in the same way like the bond also stretch okay so if this is stretching in the same way the bonds have bending also like suppose uh, uh this is a bond mm, this bond so even there is a bending in bond it means the bond angle usually bond angle uh changes so bonds have stretching and bonds have on the bending till here we learn okay and they have a specific frequency like vibration and they will have obviously a special some frequency of this vibration and if the chemist found that if we provide some infrared spec uh, radiations to these bonds so and some of the radiation some of the frequency matches with the uh vibration frequency of the bond a particular bond so the bond vibrates the bond absorbs energy and obviously it will vibrate in greater extent so whenever they absorb energy we call the, the energy of the uh, of the uh, infrared radiation that corresponds to the energy of the uh, vibration of the bond or you can say the frequency of the vibration in the bond when it matches with the frequency of the infrared provided so it absorbs the infrared uh, radiation and you can say this is called resonance also so when this phenomenon takes place so uh, we can find that at which frequency which particular bond is which particular bond vibrates now so by giving infrared radiation uh, we can uh, we can easily identify not very easily i mean we can easily we can identify the particular functional group present okay now 
uh, how will this happen? Um, how can we find this infrared, uh, this uh, functional group? Okay. Okay, so the functional group, the question is how do we find the functional group? And how will be the um, how will be the spectrum look like? Just let me show you uh, how will be the spectrum look like. Uh, this is like the spectrum, mass spectrum, uh, infrared spectrum. You can see these are so many lines. Okay. And first thing you can see on the y-axis is a transmittance. Keep in mind that theory, we don't have to explain the theory. In the mass spectrum, you have transmittance from 0 to 100 percent. When there's a trough, it means that at this range of frequency, uh, the the light, the energy, the wavelength, the frequency of the infrared radiation is absorbed. Usually, the trough we call as peak in infrared radiations. Okay, and forget about the scale. It will not be asked in your A-level exam that there is a scale change at 2000. And there's a scale chain after 100,000 also, 1,000 also. But you don't have to worry about that. The question is, what is about wave number? The wave number is just like one upon wavelength. Okay. So the wave number, there's a sign and then one upon wavelength, so one upon lambda. If the lambda, if the wavelength unit is centimeter, so obviously its unit is per centimeter. So you don't have to worry about uh, this, why the scale change is there. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, so the the particular bond uh, in your data booklet, in exam, it is given that which, uh, which functional group vibrates at which frequency. Like alcohol OH, it also depends on the environment. Like the OH of alcohol is very easy to distinguish because it vibrates 3700 to 3200. Okay, can you see it goes left to right, it, the value decreases on the x-axis. Okay, it's very un, it's unusual, right? But for y-axis it's okay, percentage uh, transmittance is there. If the percentage transmittance is very less, like this one, it means it is more absorbed. This radiation has less percentage of transmittance means it is absorbed by the compound, by the particular bond. So alcohol has a range. Why is a range? Because the, it may be methanol, it may be ethanol, propanol, butanol, it may be some tertiary alcohol, it may be secondary alcohol. So the environment also plays some role in the vibration frequency of the particular bond. So this range will be given to you in exam. Like for OH of carboxylic acid has a range from 3000 per centimeter to 2500. So you will not be confused by the OH of carboxylic acid or OH of alcohol. Got it? I just share with you the data booklet used to be given before 2023, but now it is not given and um, it is the uh, data booklet is not given, but you will be given the value a table like this. So you can see the CO bond, single bond, whether it is present in hydrox, the alcohol or ester, this is the range in which it will absorb infrared radiation like that, these compounds. Okay. Okay. Now, so you know about the mass spectrum. Most of the people, they call it uh, graph. It's not graph, it's called spectrum. So what is in the spectrum? First thing is percentage transmittance. So you don't have to worry about it. 
Okay, percentage transmittance means how much light is uh, infrared radiation is absorbed, uh, is passed through the compound. Okay, on y axis, this is 0, 200. If it is 4%, 5%, 3%, 2% means it's almost uh, absorbed by the compound. Okay, and the second thing we learned that the mass spectrum, uh, the x axis is from higher to lower value. Third thing we learned that the the scale has some discrepancy, but it is not asked at A level, okay? In A level, you are asked only to interpret the spectrum and predict which functional group is present, okay? So the question is how to predict about the functional group present. I told you in alcohol, you have to see only two bonds. One is OH bond and second is carbon oxygen bond. The OH bond is um, has a range uh, roughly 3700 to 3200 per centimeter. You don't have to memorize it, but it's, it's usually broad and very easily distinguishable. And the carbon oxygen bond is approximately like 1000 to 1300. The exact value is given in the data booklet. I asked my student to just remember the overall rough value, 1000 to 1300. So for alcohol, only you have to see these two bonds. Okay. Now, what about the, and um, I will show you different spectrum uh, after this explanation. Okay. Now, what about, um, uh, number two, carboxylic acid. How many bonds will be there? The first thing of the carboxylic acid is C double bond O. Keep in mind, roughly, approximately C double bond O, in, it may be in aldehyde, it may be in ketone, it may be in carboxylic acid, it may be in, uh, uh, in amide, it may be in ester. So approximately, just remember around 1700. The exact value little varies between, uh, varies between the C double bond O bond of aldehyde and ketone and carboxylic acid. Little and as well is a little difference, but approximately this one. The first bond you have to see this. The second bond that's in the carboxylic acid is OH bond. This bond of the carboxylic acid can be very easily distinguishable because it's very broad peak. Later, you are not supposed to explain why there is a broad peak and why there is a sharp peak. A broad peak means the, the frequency of radiation absorbed as a range, big range. And it happens usually for, usually for the polar compound like OH group, okay, which has high dipole. So its range is uh, 3000 to 2500, but again, I ask you that you don't have to memorize these values. And the third bond is CO, which is usually not asked. Usually this bond is not asked. It's around approximately 1,000, uh, 1,300 to 1,000. Again, can you see that I'm writing the opposite way? Okay. Okay, so in carboxylic acid, you have to see only these three, no other bonds. And keep in mind, you may say carbon-hydrogen bond. Carbon-hydrogen bond is whenever you cannot see the carbon-hydrogen bond in carboxylic acid because it's around around 3,000, approximately 3,000. So it will be merged in this bond. So you can you, in carboxylic acid mainly one and two. The third one is very rarely asked. One and two are main bonds that you can distinguish. The exact value I'm telling you again, you have to see from the data booklet, which is given. Okay. The exact value I can show you, uh, you look here, the carboxylic uh, value OH, uh, look here, it is 2500 to 3000 and the CO of carboxylic group, 1670 to 1640. Okay. And our, this is our Cambridge book, and uh, in Edexcel syllabus, it is more defined. Aldehyde is different. C double bond O bond in aldehyde has a different frequency 
of vibration and ketone c double bond has a different frequency of vibration okay and ester c double bond o has a different frequency of vibration that is given in the exam okay and this is for the rough values given here in cambridge this book is cambridge uh, book published by cambridge a level cambridge publication publishers okay now so let's go back to functional group okay now we we did one alcohol we did carboxylic group third one is ester in ester you have to see this is ester the first thing that you have to see is c double bond o which is approximately at 1700 per centimeter again don't have to know the values second is this co bond or this sorry this co bond so co bond is approximately 1300 to 1000 per centimeter or 1000 to 1300 no problem you can write both ways no problem so ester you have to see these two whenever there is a ester i will show you the functional group you can see carbon hydrogen bond also because carbon hydrogen bond is approximately at 3000 like 2900 something approximately 3000 is easier to memorize okay but in alcohol you will not see uh, in carboxylic acid you will not see this bond ch bond but in ester you will see this ch bond okay one by one i will show you the spectrum of all these three and uh, you may say that where is the ester i can show you the ester mm -hmm. This is alcohol, see? Alcohol, I told you around 3200 to 3700 approximately is very broad. This is OH bond. Okay? This is OH bond. And it's after 3200. This, this alcohol. And this is the CO bond. In alcohol, I told you that you have to see only two bonds. One is OH, the main is OH bond, and the second one is carbon oxygen. Okay, and this is ester. In ester, I told you that you have to see two major bonds. One is C double bond O, which is around 1700, which is this one, C double bond O. And this one is uh, CH bond, and this one is 1300, is uh, you can say carbon oxygen bond. Okay, so in ester, you have to see carbon first co bond and then you can see co single bond between 1300 to 1000 and the third one is ch bond is also prominent in ester and ketone and in aldehyde but not in alcohol and uh, carboxylic acid okay ch bond is found is this peak is found easily in aldehyde ketone and ester but uh, not in car uh, carboxylic acid and alcohol because is, uh, this bond is this trough is uh, this peak is merged there okay i'll show you the carboxylic acid the ketone this is the ketone in ketone you have to show one is c double bond o around 1700 this is and this is a smaller 3000 that is carbon hydrogen bond. Okay, that, that's not very important. Okay, and the next one is um, is carboxylic aldehyde. Again, aldehyde. We have the functional group aldehyde. This one. Okay, so this is the 1700 carbon oxygen bond. That is the main bond that you have to see in aldehyde. If aldehyde is given to you and you are asked which one is, uh, how will you identify which two peak, which peak is the most prominent, that is C double bond O1. And uh, CH bond is also a little polar, so this is around. You can see the CH bond in aldehyde and then you can also see the CH bond. But main is this one. Again, you have to know that table you have to refer the table when you are writing in in answer uh, okay 
but there is no so you can you can predict that there is no here there is no broad peak so it's not alcohol not carboxylic acid okay understand so that's easier that uh, you can eliminate some by looking at the spectrum hydroxy acid and carboxylic acid is i think first let's show you uh, let's see carboxylic acid this alcohol okay sometimes um, this hydroxy acid means oh is also there and carboxylic acid is also there that will be a very broad peak this oh of alcohol and oh of carboxylic acid can you see it started with like 2500 and merge and so big like around this so alcohol and carboxylic acid both oh is merged carboxylic acid oh has a range 3000 to 2500 and alcohol oh has range 3200 to 3700 so is a very broad peak okay and the carboxylic group c double bond o is this one right okay so this is the spectrum of the carboxylic group which functional group that it has here because the three thousands before three thousand approximately it is started here this peak okay and this one is 1700 is uh, C double bond O. So oh, this is uh, amine, primary amine. Primary amine, we say when the nitrogen has two hydrogen. Amino group is attached with carbon, is called amine. And this for primary amine, because nitrogen has two hydrogen, and this range is. So you can see the two trough here. That's particular for primary amine. Okay, but it's very rarely asked. So that's also polar. So nitrogen, nitrogen bond. So the polar bonds have like uh, the high wave number values. Okay. Okay, there's a past paper question. Let's see this question. A reaction sequence is there. Halogen alkane to cyanide substitution reaction and cyanide to carboxylic acid. Cyanide group is hydrolyzed by reacting with acid, dilute acid HCl. That's not the question actually. The question is propanoic acid and reduction. LiLH4 causes reduction. And uh, the question is uh, the D will be obtained. So the carboxylic acid after reduction you should know it forms primary alcohol. So the W will be CH3, CH2 and CH2OH. 3 carbon carboxylic acid will form 3 carbon primary alcohol. So this will be the W. So W will be the propane one ol and keep in mind and the propanoic acid. Okay. Now what is the question? Question is propanoic acid is shown. And the question is how um, the question is how what is the difference between the infrared spectrum of W and propanoic acid? So the propanoic acid have a C double bond O. So it has a peak around 1700 approximately that you have to code the exact value from the data booklet. And the propanoic acid has OH group which has range 3000 to 2500 in the data booklet. This is OH. These two are the major bond. Okay. Then in w w is the spectrum is not given but w is propen one all or primary alcohol so it will have first difference is it will no it will not have any peak of c double bond o around 1700 first difference second difference it will have a broad peak of oh around uh, 
3700 to 3200 or you can write this way also no problem 3600 sorry again keep in mind that in data booklet of cambridge this range is given but in it excel book the range is little different okay they have written uh, for oh of alcohol 3200 to 3700 little there are different difference in the values okay and you don't need to worry about it because based on different scale different standard okay now i am going to explain you uh, give you a brief summary of uh, what we have done by now and i will upload another video for another video for past paper question so first thing is that every bond the bond has stretching also and uh, there are different types of stretching and uh, in each type of each stretching it has a, like a, a particular vib frequency of vibration and some bonds have uh, bending also and this bending in which usually the bond angle changes so due to the this motion this vibratory motion in the bonds uh, they if infrared radiation is uh, is provided to these bonds so these bonds vibrate at a greater uh, amplitude right so by which uh, and they absorb the infrared radiation and how much light they absorb we can find from a machine called infrared spectrometer which shows that how much light is pass through it transmitted so the the more light absorbed means less light will be the less radiation will be the sorry i'm using the word light this radiation will be the uh, the more light absorbed means there will be less percentage transmitted okay so different functional group uh, absorb infrared radiation at different wavelength uh, and or different frequency sorry different frequency of infrared radiation and that's because uh, the, the the environment of the bond also matters okay understand so if we provide a specific wave uh, frequency of radiation so we can identify a particular wavelength okay in a particular bond and non polar last thing the 100% non polar compound uh, non polar diatomic molecule like uh, O O bond cannot be found by infrared radiation because it's hundred percent non-polar. They don't have dipole moment, so we cannot identify like nitrogen, nitrogen, like hydrogen, hydrogen. But we can find this carbon-carbon bond is not considered as hundred percent non-polar. The reason is the other groups uh, are here due to which the bonds are um, not hundred percent non-polar. Okay. That's all, and then we'll discuss the past paper in the next one, in the next recording.